path to a better life begins with a simple step. Empower Radio presents Simple Steps, Real Change with Cheryl Maloney. Empower Radio. EmpowerRadio.com. Here's your host, Cheryl Maloney. Have you gone through some major life changes and are you still reeling from the upheaval in your life? Do you wonder when your life will settle down into a more comfortable routine, though you haven't seen that for a long time? Are you just struggling with it all and can't break this cycle of stress? Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here with me. This is Cheryl. And if you found yourself in a never-ending cycle of change that you don't feel you can dig out from, this show's for you. My life has been the same for pretty much the last 10 years, and that's why I'm grateful to have today's guest, Terry Williams, here to share with you her wisdom and insights on how our own energy has the power to lift us up or to keep us down. Terry's a certified intuitive and shamanic practice along with being an energy worker, and her energy just makes me sore every time I talk to her. She's the creator of Soul Practices and the original Bliss Lady, and she knows that we each have the power to be our own healer. Terry, welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl, and I'm so glad that you are back on the air and putting your good juju out there as well. Well, thank you for that. I, I think between the two of us today, we've we've all gone through a lot of stresses in our lives. And tell the audience that may not have heard you before a little bit of your background. Uh, well, you know, as you said, I've definitely been through my share of uh, ups and downs. You know, there's a, a movie out there called Parenthood with Steve Martin, and it's it's one of my favorite movies. There's a scene in it where he's talking to his grandmother and she's, uh, you know, probably 85, 90. And she starts talking about the roller coaster of life and how she had gone on a date with, the, you know, with grandpa. And, and she was looking around at people that were on the roller coaster ride. And she'd said, it, you know, it goes up and that's life and it goes down and it's super exciting. And, then she mentions how some people really like the roller, or I mean the uh, merry-go-round, and she said that just goes around and around. There's nothing to it. She said, "I like the roller coaster," and I think that's really what life is about, right? It's that roller coaster, and that's certainly where I've been. And I was introduced to energy work uh, 25 years ago when my son was injured in an accident, and it opened my mind and my life to metaphysics and the universe and really staying connected to that place of positivity and joy, no matter how low you get. Uh, you have seen and worked with so many people that have hit that low, and but the roller coaster scares them. And how do you help someone who's on that downward swing realize that the up is coming again? Um, you know, for myself, I look at it as it's all energy, right? We have positive energy. We have negative energy. And I, I sometimes will stop them and say, you know, close your eyes for a minute and think about one of the most um, important, loving, uh, positive experiences in your life. And it's funny because the other day I did this with another client and I said, now think about where you're at now. And tune into a place where you had some pretty crummy experiences. That's not quite what I said to her, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and go back to that positivity moment and realize that that's, it's all an energetic flow and this too shall pass. Now, sometimes it's hard to stay connected to that, as you know, because change is inevitable, right? It changes the way of life for us. It, if it stayed the same, I'm sorry, I think we would be really bored. And what would be the purpose of being here? Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're absolutely right. We would be bored. We would be searching for something else. Right. 
and these experiences that we have, like you say, we get into the negative places, but if we shift ourselves to something more positive, we're feeling better. But what do you say to the person that goes, well, that's just sticking your head in the sand. You're ignoring reality. What do you say to the folks that believe that you're ignoring reality by focusing on the positive? Well, my favorite my favorite line is what we focus on multiplies, right? It's kind of like uh, exactly. the law of attraction and then the law of action, right? We can, we can focus on the good things that happen in our lives and more than likely we will start receiving more and more of those good things, whatever that looks like to you. Just as we stay in the downward spiral, right? If we continue to stay stuck in that mode of, um, being like Eeyore, you know, or uh-huh. Debbie Downer, then that's how we're going to continuously be. <laughs> well, I'm not, I think I have a pretty good feel for you that staying in a Debbie Downer place just isn't where you want to be. I know I don't want to be there, but life does throw us curveballs. They throw us curveballs and we go, what the heck? just happened. All right. And I'd use different words for that too, Terry. But you know, (laughs) it is all part of life. As you say, this is all part of life. It's a cycle in its own way. And if we can see that as being in action, in movement, not permanent, I think we get stuck sometimes believing that this is all it's ever going to be. And we forget that it wasn't always this way. Right. Well, you know, you, you said the word permanent and uh, one of the one of the Buddhist favorite teachings is impermanence. There is Imp- there is nothing that is uh, not susceptible to change and stress. I would much prefer to see the cycle. And that's in my own life. And folks that know me and have followed me for a while know that I've been through many years of stress and change. And and unfortunately, a lot of people in my life have passed and, and have died. And I go back to this place to say, but while they were here, this was a wonderful experience that we all came here to have this experience, whatever that looks like for us, and why not embrace it as being that ever-changing cycle of life that we came here to experience. Yeah, and step into practicing, I call it the art of impeccable soul care, right? So art to me is um, it's an expression of human creativity and skill, you know, using your imagination and in, um, in ways that are, are delightful and creative and, and promote manifesting. And then, uh, you think about the word impeccable and it's about behavior and, and performance and honoring, those highest standards of integrity and honesty and um, unconditional love, right? All of those things within ourselves first and then and then our soul. You know, one of my friends calls it Im- impeccable soul, uh, self-care. And I think of it as, you know, we are spiritual beings and the essence of who we are is our soul. So why would we not want to really step into honoring our soul and in ways that uh, balance our energy and support stepping through that change and that stress in, with ease and grace, right? And staying balanced, you know, again, kind of like the Buddhist philosophies where they talk about uh, the middle road and, um, you know, if you get off kilter, come back to the middle. If you, if you are distracted, come back to center, and, I, you know, like you, I've, I've had my share of stuff. I could tell you about my day yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> really, but by incorporating some practices into my life that um, maybe would be new habits for people, it helps me come back to center a little bit faster than I used to, maybe well, when sure. I was 20. Sure. Well, share share something that you do that helps bring you back to center. Well, this one I'm sure you could guess is being fearlessly positive, right? <laughs> um, because we kind of talked about that. But 
but really habits are just re- repeated behaviors that we kind of um, accept as being second nature. You know, we get, have the habit of getting up and brushing our teeth every day. Maybe, maybe you don't. I don't know. That's one of my habits, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but so I, I incorporate being fearlessly positive in my life so that when I get derailed, I can say, okay, wait, 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 wait. What, what is this happening to me for? You know, notice I didn't say the word to, but what is this happening to me for? What can I take away from this to create some semblance of, of good or, or positive out of it? You know, um, Again, I could tell you about my day yesterday. I'm, you know, it's crazy from 6.30 in the morning on. And then I also incorporate habits of gratitude. You know, I, I say this over and over again when I'm on the air, but before I even put my foot on the ground when I wake up in the morning, I close my eyes and I look up at the ceiling and um, start thanking the universe for another day. You know, I am so grateful that I'm here to experience whatever shows up. And, you know, then I, I, I thank the stars and I thank God. And I thank the the man that just made my coffee in the other room, man, that's (laughs) something to really be thankful for. Right. And, and then I didn't get a phone call in the middle of the night that something happened with one of my kids. You know, there's a, a million things I could list off that I Mm -hmm. begin to be grateful for before I even get out of bed. To me, that's like setting the tone for, for what's going to come. And what a simple way to start the day, because while, like you said, you may have had the day that you really don't want to repeat, but you go, okay, what am I grateful for? What did, what did I learn? What am I grateful for that has nothing to do with, you know, the, bad experience that I just had. And I I just sit there like you and go, all right, this didn't happen to me. And I like the way you put this. What am I learning from this experience? What, What do I need to take away from this? What am I supposed to learn? And I find that I will do that when I get to my lowest lows, and I've had them a lot lately. When I get to that low point, I just sit there and go, there's a reason I'm having this experience. What is this teaching me? What did I come here to learn from this? And that takes away the... That takes away the anger. It takes away the the grief. It takes away the heartbreak, because there's a reason for it. And when we believe there's a reason that is positive, because I'm like you, I'm going to stay in that positive place as much as I can, because that just feels better. But when we ask ourselves, what are we learning, and what can we use this for? We're empowered. As a pan empowered is exactly where we are. We're empowered to make our lives even better going forward. Right. Well, and two things that you said there, you know, um, you know, coming here to to learn these lessons. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of teachers in the world today that uh, consider Earth kind of like an Earth school. You know, I'm sh- I'm sure you've heard that before, where people are talking about that, and they'll say. Um, you know, we're, we came to earth, it's like earth school and we're here to learn some things. And for me, when I can look at it like that and I can, you know, not that I, not that I necessarily believe that this is earth school, right? Because if it is, sometimes I think I want a new classroom. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I'm with you on that one, Terry. Right. But, you know, if we can look at it similar to that with uh, some acceptance of it, that, okay, what, what can I learn? If, if this is, in fact, Earth school, what's the lesson in here today? Whether I'm passing or failing isn't the point, right? <laughs> I'm not getting graded here. The only one grading me is my ego. So what's the lesson here? And then I feel a little bit more confident and comfortable moving on, right? And then the other thing that you said there was feel, Right. So some of the things that I'll teach my clients is when they start talking about, you know, being that Debbie Downer or Eeyore, oh, no, it's this happening again. 
how does that feel in your body? You know, one of the key questions that I ask myself when I start to um, experience those stressful moments, uh, change, because that's really what it is, is I'll feel things in my body and I'm like, hmm, I don't really like that, right? I don't like that feeling of fear or anxiety or anxiousness or, you know, tension and um, even when I'm in a deep state of sorrow and sadness, there's an energy around me that makes me feel uncomfortable. And I'm not saying that I want to ignore it because sometimes I just sit down and say, okay, I need to feel this and then figure out how to shift it. And that's, you know, that's a strong lesson for people because we spend so much time struggling against the struggles and we mm-hmm. fight, we fight those feelings, you know, it feels honestly really bad and we just wallow in it because that's what we're feeling. And when we're struggling it, we're actually making it worse. We're actually multiplying it. When, as you say, if we can sit there and say, okay, this is a feeling I'm supposed to have. How, what am I learning? How can I use this to raise myself back up again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And something's going to shift because Just like time changes every second, we're always changing. So something will shift. Even if you close your eyes and and imagine what it would look like to be beyond this. You know, um, today I was having a conversation with somebody and um, she has a vision of, of an event that she'd like to attend in a few years. And she was like, I... I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to get there. That's really all I want to do. And I I'm, I listened to her. And when she stopped, I said, you know, can you hear yourself? <laughs> can you hear what you're saying to yourself right now? She's stuck in the nevers. Yes. I'm like, okay, so close your eyes and visualize what it would look like if you were there. And then I said, now let's change that to it from if to when. Visualize it. When you're there, and man, I got chills from head to toe. I don't know if she did, but I could see her clearly at this event and having fun and, you know, interacting and doing her job, doing what she's really good at. And within a few seconds, I could see the light on her face as she actually could feel that change within herself. And I'm not saying it's always going to be that easy, but... I'm not saying it's always not going to be that easy either. Well, and isn't it the consistent practice of visualizing yourself where you want to be, not where you don't want to be, that enables you to get there? And it's got to be a habit. It has to be a practice. And if nothing better to focus on in your life, focus on a practice and a habit that will make you feel better about yourself instead of the practice of going, I'm never, I'm never, I'm never. And you feel worse. Absolutely. You know, when we were kids, um, when we were kids, we daydreamed, right? We, we daydreamed about the future. We got excited about things that were in our imagination. And then all of a sudden, ego kicks up into high gear. And <laughs> we go to school and we start to be around people on a regular basis that are causing us to lose sight of the power of that imagination and being able to live in that kind of consciousness where we can see a different reality for ourselves. And Terry, that brings up a really interesting point. And what is your suggestion for that person that is trying to stay and actively trying to stay in the positive place, but they're around people that tell them they're dreaming, they're not they're not living in reality. They're fooling themselves. How do you help them deal with the Debbie Downers that are around them? Two things. <laughs> Besides run. <laughs> 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 runs good find your tribe you know find your tribe find a balance of people that will support you on your journey that will be your cheerleaders it's funny today I was thinking 
um, I, I had a coaching call with another client. And as I hung up, I thought, man, I feel like a cheerleader. I was never a cheerleader in high school. Okay. I was the tomboy, played ball, all that other stuff. But I'm thinking everybody needs a cheerleader. Everybody needs at least one person in their court that can give them positive insight that can give them a, Hey, you're doing great. Or a, don't give up on that dream. Just because it's not, it's not, so-and-so's dream doesn't mean it can't be yours. So I, I really encourage people to find your tribe. And if it means eliminating those people or minimizing the time spent with them, then so be it. And stop sharing with them. If you are constantly getting feedback from somebody that is pushing your dream down, then you need to stop sharing with them because they don't deserve to hear your dream. Oh, I love that. And I think that is something that we neglect. We think that, you know, these are people that are important in our lives and we have to tell them everything and we don't. And no. I love that you've said that because there are people, there are children, spouses, parents, best friends that don't share that dream. They want us to be happy, but their version of happy is what is in their heart, not in ours. Right. And it's okay not to tell them. And right. And to me, that goes back to the art of impeccable soul care. Be creative in the ways that you honor yourself, you know. Love yourself and your soul enough to say, no, I'm not going down that road because it doesn't do anything for me but make me feel terrible worse. that's not yeah. what i wanted to say but you know <laughs> it, it makes me feel worse absolutely so love and honor yourself enough to be able to say no and to pause and say hey is that really a reflection of of who i am is that uplifting me is that supporting me on my journey because if it's not I love myself enough to say, mm, sorry, I'm not going there. You know, we're taught that love, loving ourselves is um, narcissistic and egocentric. When in all reality, just like uh, grabbing your mask on an airplane, right? you got to take care of yourself first. And if that means eliminating those people or, um, and I'm not saying living in denial, right? That they don't exist, but right. uh, eliminate your own energy exchange so that you continue to raise your vibration instead of lower it. I love it. And, you know, we forget that we need to put ourselves first because if we are being dragged down by everyone that's around us, we are never going to get back up again if we allow that to happen. And that impeccable soul care is something that we so often forget because we're taking care of everyone else. But we need to take care of ourselves first because, like you said, you can't put the mask on someone else on an airplane if you're already passed out because you didn't put yours on first. Yeah, we, absolutely. That's a deep we, breath on that one. I heard that deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> we, we forget about ourselves when the truth of the matter is when we remember ourselves and remember how important we are to those of us around us. Mm -hmm. that we can't help another until we help ourselves and aren't we worth it and i'm thinking the answer to that is absolutely absolutely <laughs> what was the preference by l'oreal commercial with uh you know all the different celebrities who would say because i'm worth it Exactly. Well, Terry, it has been such a delight to have you on the show today. And before I let you go, tell everyone about your radio show and more where they can get more from Terry. Well, of course, like Cheryl, you can find me here on Empower Radio. My show is Soulful Living with Terry Williams. And uh, my website is soulpractices.com. And I, hey, you know, step into love. Love yourself enough to, to honor the beings that you really are. Well, Terry, that's beautiful, and I like the fact that you've taken time today to share with us the soul practices and understand that, you know, we need, we absolutely need to nurture our own soul and make this life 
what we're here to be. That roller coaster that we're on can be wonderful or miserable, but I love that your soulful practices are, let's do this. So, Terry, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Deepest bows and virtual hugs. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Simple Steps, Real Change, where my guest has been Terry Williams, who's also here on Empower Radio. Until next week, it's time to practice your impeccable soul care. Have a great week. 